because I really believe they've stolen the wind from the poor sale here. And why not hearken on that history of we're Bentley. In case you didn't know this, cars used to be built more like a Lego brick. You had a platform on the bottom and a body that went on top. I don't know about you, but when I was playing with my Legos, this just meant the world of opportunity. <laughs> I don't wanna die! We almost died! Back in the early 1900s, all these coach makers would make all sorts of neat and one-off bodies or very minimal production run bodies that were basically handmade. This means certain coach builders had a certain eye for how something would look, or they'd maybe do what you wanted, or they'd get all the types of exotic materials that you wanted, and they put them on your chassis. The bigger luxurious names have always been known for it. I'm not talking about Hyundai or Genesis or even Mercedes, really. I'm talking about your Bentleys, your Rolls Royces. Exotic and plush or beautiful materials have always been used in those cars. But what about the ultra elite type of items? The coach builders of yesteryear are coming back. More and more car makers are taking care of the niche of the 1%, where you might be able to choose individual paints. For example, BMW's got the individual line of series where you can option certain things and paints for your car. McLaren has MSO, which also has special types of paints and builds and options. Jaguar seems to have drawn on its history and is making classic and ultra unique cars, but again, you, you don't really hear of them. What about the ultra luxurious that I mentioned before? Well, in this case, Let's talk about the Bentley Mulliner. Mulliner used to be one of those coach builders back in the day that built those ultra cool and ultra unique type of bodies and luxury items for your car. They always have been, but are even more so the ultra luxurious part of Bentley. Marketing focus and world demands have brought them back. How do you bring back your name in big style? Build a one-off car. Within nine months, this Bentley Bacalar went from a sketch to a 650 horsepower monster. Now as exotic as that sounds, the 650 horsepower motor is just an evolution of the W12 that's been around forever, but this is more about the exclusivity of the Speedster body. Oh yeah, wait, the Speedster body has been around a while, and it must have been Bentley that made it famous, right? Nope. Porsche is the one that truly brought back the desire for the Speedster. The 911 variant, the Cayman or Boxster variant, these were the ones that kind of piqued the limited production interest. Bentley must have thought to themselves, why not ride the coattail? Speedster bodies are sexy. They're generally only two seats, which already harkens to a sports car, except that this car weighs an absolutely insane amount. Mwah. They're marketing a sports car, a Speedster, something exclusive. In essence, a Speedster harkens back to the old race cars that were completely open. And sure, Bentley has a racing history as well, and a successful one at that, that really even recently they've really done well with. But this car is not lightweight. Yeah. This car is fast because it's a freight train. The focus here should really be on the beauty. Exclusive paints, exclusive finishes. Apparently they're using some sort of exotic wood that is reclaimed from some sort of lake in England somewhere. And that's really cool. That's really ultra rare. That's going to pull the big old dollars that the 1% are gonna buy. There is one thing in the interior of the Bacalar that I really, really enjoy, and that is the fact that it uses a lot of cloth. I'm not talking about basic cloth material. We're talking about exotic cottons, the kind of stuff where you pay a little more for a shirt or for a pant or for, let's say, a suit, and you get a different type of material. It doesn't have to be made out of a dead animal to be special. You can probably tell I'm a little bit divided. It makes me angry that they're trying to go for that sports car physique and look and speedsterness, because I really believe they've stolen the wind from the poor sale here. There is a market that caters to the ultra elite, and why not hearken on that history of we're Bentley, and then just deal with this kind of thing. It isn't all new. It isn't super special. It's just rare and built as a one-off. What I'm trying to say here is I think they're going about it the wrong way. Ferrari has a special division as well, where basically they work alongside you with an empty checkbook, but you put down a base model Ferrari and you start to build the body and features around it. What results is potentially some ugly or beautiful cars out of it, but it is something definitively unique. And when you've got a blank checkbook like that, the company is still making money. The customer in the end is satisfied because they've gotten what they want. Bentley here may be after that coach building all over again. Was the Bacalar the car to exemplify this? I don't know. I do like it. I do enjoy it. It is beautiful. It's fast. Do I want one? Yeah, but, but for what this car costs, which I don't even know what this car costs. Oh for what this car costs, I'm pretty sure there's some other items that would be nearer to the top of my list 
but it doesn't even matter because all 12 of these cars are already spoken for. So we'll see what Mulliner and its coach-builtness comes up with in the future, but I really hope that they get a little more unique than just dropping a slightly different body in an already existing car.